transmit my thoughts across space and time. Holy cow, I never go to the bank. Money just wings into my account. I, everything about life has changed. Technology. You've heard this, right? And then, uh, now I point out that, well, that's true, kind of every place in school. And I always get the same thing, that little subdued chuckle. And the reason it's subdued is because it's kind of sad, really. You know, it, it hurts our feelings a little bit. Because we've all been involved in this technology game a long time. Eric Ashby would say, in the 70s, the same things we're saying now. Boy, this technology, one day it's really going to make a difference. We've been at this 40 years. And so lately I've been given this talk that says, if not now, when? Right, like, when does it change? And so you guys, some of you I know, came to my talk last year. And my talk last year was that LMS is dead. Now you know how when we talk about free, we got all the different meanings of free. Free is in Libra, free is in gratis, free is in beer, free is in puppies. We got all those different shades of free. Um, well, we also have shades of dead. So here's the thing. I don't mean to say that there aren't any LMSs, because obviously there are some. I don't mean to say that they're not running, because obviously they are. But one thing is really clear. The courses that by and large are in the LMS in 2011, I'm not talking about the ones that your superstars make now. I'm talking about almost all of them. They're the same as they were in 2003. They're the same. It's passing out the papers at the beginning of class, and it's collecting at the end. It's mostly administrative stuff. We're still using mostly books, which is another odd thing for a guy who works for a publisher now to be talking about. But, um, yeah, I mean, if we're waiting on change from the LMS, we're waiting on a train that's not coming. Because think about what happens with technologies. They go through a curve. And we're at the end of that curve with the LMS. We know what it is. Look at the RPs. are all the same. It's an important piece. But somehow we've got to get this conversation changed. We've got to get it focused on the content. We've got to get it focused on the pedagogy. And you know, biology is different than psychology. And psychology is different than mathematics. Every one of these subjects has different conceptions of how they're taught. But the ways in which innovation passes from person, from person to person, from instructor to instructor, way too slow. Look at what happens everywhere else. How much quicker it is for people to generate an innovation and then propagate it. But if one of your professors develops some really cool way to teach something using some combination of technology and innovative pedagogy, it takes nine months for them to communicate that to a broad audience through some conference. And then the people in the audience have to hear it, write it down, maybe go and try to download Yik and Yak, go you know, get this from Merlot and that from Connections and this from some place, and then somehow figure out how to stitch that all together and upload it into their LMS. Usually call in some CIO's office along the way, and the CIO, well, you know, God, I got a lot of things to do, and I got. And the result is, progress is very slow. And so my talks always end the same way. Why doesn't somebody do something about this? I want to introduce you to a new problem. Um, we've chosen that as the image because we're at the beginning of the road. The most important things about this product that I'm going to tell you, it's the model that we have. It's the journey that we're on. It's the way we're going to approach this. That's what's new. The product is open class. And the way that we want you to understand open class is in terms of three things. We're going to give you a platform to innovate in education, a platform that's open, that's really easy. We believe the results that you will produce <coughs> will be amazing. They will transcend what we've been able to achieve so far by lowering the friction necessary to create innovation and necessary to propagate that innovation. So what's core to that? Well, first, let me show you a little bit about what this thing looks like. 
Because, you know, anytime somebody shows you a product, well, they start showing you pictures of it. And, uh, hey, that doesn't look bad. It looks kind of fresh. I like it. Hey, there's people in it. You don't usually see that in your LMS. That's kind of neat. But here's my point. If I start going through the features one at a time, by the time I'm done, you'll say, yeah, OK, there's an LMS. Show me the innovation. I thought you said it was dead. It's the model. The model is what's different. Well, what are you talking about? Let me make it clear. First thing is, Open Class is going to use the power of the cloud to deliver it to you for free. So let's start with that. Now, free. I mean free free. I mean like free is in the kind that you don't pay. That kind of free. Now, the thing about this free is what, what does it do? Well, it makes it possible for you to pick it up without friction. What kind of friction am I talking about? Hey, when was the last time you ran an RFP on your pen? How'd that work out? Everybody do the best job possible of evaluating all the things. You know, they fill in the big spreadsheet with all the stuff. There's a lot of rancor. The vendors come in and they split the community up nine or ten ways because that's what we're good at. Let's be honest. That's how we know it to be. And then uh, you pick one. And then, it, and then a bunch of people hate it. And in the meantime, what did we win? Where did we go? What's different? What's happened? Look, we're gonna, it couldn't be easier to adopt this. Just pick it up. Start using it. If you already got one, fine. Put this one next to it. No problem. Use it until it's not useful to you. If you, don't, if you don't like it. The one thing we ask is tell us what you didn't like on the way out. Because we're determined through the cloud to make this a very powerful solution for you. To make this work for your faculty. To make this work for your institution. To make this deliver on its promise. Now, what do I mean by open? Well, um, I mean, <coughs> open to every kind of content. A lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, I've heard about this open class. I hear you have to buy uh, nine Pearson things to get it. Or, uh, no, no, it's not a buy one, get one, or 20% of Pearson. Look, open to every kind of content. Why would we do that? Because we believe in our products. Because we believe in the, in the products that we make. And we think they, they will help you to impact student success. We're confident that our products can compete well. So we're open to that competition. We're open to that marketplace. We want to see you use every kind of content, open source content, user generated content, content from other publishers. Absolutely open. Well, what if we don't use any Pearson content? Can we say, yes, open. Open. Now, also open to innovation. Well, what do you mean by open to innovation? You're not giving us all the source code. Google, that platform that they run for them, it's awesome. And they develop it on an amazing curve. And it advances at a rate it's very difficult to manage. How can they do this? Because they run it on a single piece of infrastructure delivered from the cloud that allows you to develop software in a way no one else can do. And then they extend a set of APIs, web services. And what do those web services do? They make it possible to use that infrastructure all over the place in all kinds of ways, mixed everywhere. I mean, look around at where the Google infrastructure is. Same model in open cloud. Open web services running on a cloud-based infrastructure that delivers that capability that you can mix. Mix how? Put it in that, put it in mobile apps. Put it in your portal. Put it in experiences that you create. Absolutely, through our developers network, we want to work with you to do that. What does it do? It lets you focus on driving that innovation into experiences that change student success without having to worry about provisioning those services yourself. I think it's a, it, hey, will this model be right for everybody? No. Because nothing in the market is right for everybody. But we're confident that we can help a set of schools, a broad swath of education, make a difference with that kind of model. We'll talk a little more about how this platform is open to innovation as we go. What do I mean by easy? Well, here's the best way I can describe easy. We announced Open Class uh, last week. We had a little website where you could go and like watch video and learn like when the appointments were to get 
to like see a demo at the booth and come here and hear about it. And then yesterday, at about, Katie, are you in here? Okay, about 10 o'clock? Yeah. About 10 o'clock, we, uh, we put it in the Google Apps Marketplace. Uh, we're at what, 500 schools? So I think that's the fastest set of LMS installs in the history of mankind. <laughs> uh, previous record, I won't say who the record holder was, but the previous record I think is six months for one. And so getting 500 in a day tells me something about where this product could go if we can execute. Because making it convenient and easy for institutions to adopt is a big piece of this puzzle. We don't do that alone. We're not taking credit for all that. The Google infrastructure and the Google App Marketplace rocks. It was really easy for us to extend it to Google Schools as a result. Um, when I say easy, we worked very hard to make this a self-service platform. Think about Amazon. When was the last time Amazon uh, released a new version? Did they come to your house? Hey, we want to train you how to buy books. We're going to come down and teach you how to do it. No. Why? Because those platforms, they evolve. They get better week over week, month over month. But they remain familiar, and people are able to, people are able to move those platforms forward. We're going to try very, very hard to continue to make Open Class accessible in that way. So easy. We'll make it easy for you to support, too. Not only will we have self-service support, but with some of the money that you save from not having to necessarily pay us for the LMS, if you need support resources, we're happy to provide them. Or you can provide them yourself, or you can find others. Right? So the support, we're determined to make very straightforward from a self-service model, and then we're also prepared to support you further. So easy. Why do you say it's amazing? Well, because if we give you a free platform, with no licensing costs, no hardware costs, no hosting costs, diminished support costs. If we give you those things to start from, you can climb the value chain. And you can focus not on the direct provisioning of services, you can begin to help your faculty create and discover learning experiences using technology that impacts student success. That's where this debate has to move. If that debate moves in that direction, we will make progress like the wind. So that amazing is what we're trying to aim for. Now, 